I wasn't always all that into this whole Christianity thing. I was kind of a messed up kid in junior high. I know you're thinking, impossible, messed up in junior high? Yeah, it could be a hard time in life for a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, I, I was not into my faith. I didn't know wh who I was, or what life was all about. No, I, just like the apostles, I had this whole stuff, all this in my head, and my parents dragged me to church every Sunday throughout my life. I went to religious ed classes. I knew the stuff, but I wasn't living it out. In fact, I was living for all the wrong things. So my parents dragged me off to a retreat that I didn't want to go to, this religious retreat weekend. And I saw this love and joy and peace in people's faces. I saw their witness by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I was blown away. I realized by looking at them, wow, they have what I want, and everything I'm living for, and all the, the people I look up to, like my rock star gods, you know, it's all empty. And I previously thought Jesus came to give us a bunch of rules or regulations, or came to make us weird, or someone we're not. I realized, you know, John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came so that they might have life and have it to the full. And I became hungry for that life. But you know what, even after that, I knew how hard it was to live it out and I fall back into my same sins again and again. It wasn't until I started to develop the discipline of daily prayer that it started to stick. And I'll tell you what, I noticed a huge before and after in my own life in the sacrament of confirmation. When I was confirmed, the bishop anointed me I felt it hit me like a ton of bricks. Now, the grace of God isn't, isn't like, you know, physical, tangible things. You don't always feel it. But sometimes he gives that gift to you. Don't get caught up in that. But sometimes he might give that gift to people for whatever reason they need it. And I guess I needed it at that time in my life. And I felt it hit me like a ton of bricks. I, mean, I, I, I was supposed to say amen. I could barely speak. I just felt this power resting on me. And I had this new strength to live out the faith afterwards. And that year after in school that I had never had before. I became like a witness in my high school. I made it my goal to share something about my faith with somebody new every day. Invite people to church, invite people to youth groups and retreats. I started to stand up for kids who were being bullied, or at least I'd stand by them as they were bullied. If I was in the locker room, I heard guys talking trash about girls. I'd go right up to them and say, hey, listen, God is listening to you right now. Sometimes they threaten me with a beatdown. That's fine. I said, it's not between me and you, it's between you and God. I just want you to know you're talking about his daughter. But I look at that before and after in my life, like, dude, I didn't have the strength to be that courageous with my faith. I really didn't until after I was confirmed. Noticed a huge difference in my life. See, this is how God has worked in the lives of Christians since the very beginning. Or even the early Christians experienced the sacrament of confirmation. We see it straight in Scripture from Acts chapter 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit.